guys doing? Ready. Fired up, man. We had a great BPM last night in Walnut. Uh, place was rocking. I think we had like uh, six brand new code numbers um, last night, which was which was pretty epic for that office. It's a relatively new office, uh, and we had about I think uh, 30 associates that were there um, last night, and which is which is exciting because when you talk about an office that's only been in existence about two months. Uh, three months, and right now we're just we're, it, they're they're rocking. Miracle and her team are are just on fire. They're currently at phone zone right now, just blasting calls and making things happen. You got yourself a business, and it's just literally spinning and running. So we want to help you guys open up one of those too, and we want to help you guys really grow this thing. I want to let you guys know too, it's really cool. I'm being actually streamed live right now on Facebook. So what we're doing is because we're expanding in so many different locations, uh, we're actually streaming live to uh, Florida, Irvine, uh, Walnuts. So a lot of the people that can just log in. Imagine when you guys get new teammates and how cool it would be where you guys get, new, get brand new people started and they're in random areas. You know, we're talking like San Fernando Valley pretty soon. We're talking about different areas that we're going to expand out to. How cool is it that you can literally, at a click of a button, right, you've got a live stream that's going on where they can, they can receive trainings from Eric Jamalita anytime they want. Is that pretty cool, right? Literally at the blink of an eye, right? That's pretty cool. So, so we want to help you guys build. So we, we invested a lot of money in like equipment and different things like that to really help us be able to stream that live. Uh, we're big on reinvesting in you and reinvesting in our business. Uh, we lead from the front, and, and we just want you guys to know we got your back. So uh, let's talk about today what we need to do to get specifically to the next level because I, I truly believe that there's a lot of talent in this room, but I need to, to point the talent in the right direction, if that makes sense. Yes or no, right? Yes. Okay, so high energy. Woo, that's got a little kick there. Okay. No, you're, you're good. You're good. Am I too loud? But let's talk regularly. It's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm not mad. I'm passionate. Always remember that, guys. Uh, never mad, always passionate. Uh, that's the way we roll. So let's talk today about one of the most important things we feel that you need to have in order for you to be able to build a massive company here. Uh, we have, obviously, the Walnut BPM going on. That's going to be on Saturday. And we have Lakewood going on on Saturday as well. Uh, I haven't decided which location I'm going to be at, but hey, at the end of the day, you need to show up. You need to be present. You need to rock the house. You need to go forward anyway. And uh, we, need to, uh, we need to bring some real value here, OK? Is that, is that fair? OK. Yeah. So let's talk about the one word that everybody needs in order to achieve their next dream, OK? And their overall big dream. What, what do you guys feel that one word is? What would, what would one thing be? It's never one thing. But if you were to have this one thing, it would, it would literally tell you exactly what you needed to do. What do you feel it is? Armando. Um, commitment. OK, that's a great word. It's commitment. What else? Consistency. Len? That was good. Consistency. Steve? Vision. Desire. These are great ones. Man, you get, you guys, if, you, if this was Family Feud, you guys would destroy it. <laughs> this is amazing. OK, what, a couple more? Integrity. Integrity. Okay, purpose. Okay, awesome. All really, really good ones. But there's one of them that takes the cake over everything. And it's this word right here. Okay? The word is clarity. <clears throat> okay, so when we talk about clarity, first of all, let's define the word. Clarity is you have this intentional focus that is completely without distractions, OK? Crystal clear vision. You literally can see exactly where you I want, to, I want you guys to understand this. Like, why is it that I can wake up every single morning fired up at my goal? Why is it that I can, no matter how things are going, I must be really loud because they just closed the door on me. Um, so why is it that I can wake up every single morning just fired up at my goal and laser focused at what I'm doing, OK? I wake up, and I, and I have this definition of getting to the next level constantly. Why? Because I've got total clarity, guys. Most people do not have total clarity. That's the reason why some people didn't make, up to the, make it to the BPM tonight. They don't have clarity. Some people, they made an excuse. Some people, they don't set up appointments. Most people don't bring guests. Most people 
they're, they're not in a position where they, look, I'm not worried about what everybody else is doing. I'm worried about what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I have total clarity. So let's go over some of the things that you need to be very, very clear about in this business and in life. If you got this, you, my friend, will be ultimately successful. I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about tonight with you guys specifically. And I said, man, every single, every single BPM, I just try to get you guys better. I just try to say, man, what value can I deliver to these guys? Man, back when I was in their position, what value could I bring to the table that they would say, you know what? I relate to that. I resonate with that. That's something that I can really take home with me. And, and the reality is, is that when you've got clarity of purpose, purpose is your why. Why are you doing this business? If you don't know why you're doing this thing, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to pan out. You know why? Because at the end of the day, you talk about what people need to know. They have to have crystal clear vision on why they're doing something. If you don't understand why you wake up out, of, get up, get up out of bed every single day, you're not motivated. You, it's very hard to stay motivated when you don't have a why. So for some of you guys, it's your kids. For some of you guys, it's more time to travel. For some of you guys, you know, it's a brand new car. For some of you guys, it doesn't matter what it is. See, I don't judge. It doesn't matter what motivates you. The most important thing, the most important goal is the one that fires you up the most. Always remember that. The most important goal is the one that fires you up the most. And it, could be, it can change at any given time. You, could, you can be three months into this thing, six months into this thing, 12 months into this thing, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the, the goal that fires you up the most is the most important one, clearly defined by, by far. So if you know your why, your purpose in this business, see, my purpose is simple. People ask me, Eric, what's your purpose? Well, back when I was broke, it was to make money. When I was broke, it was to make money. Right, because it's very hard to focus on what you need to be doing when you're not making money. Okay, so I get that, I understand that. But after that, you've got to graduate. You've got to get to that next level. You got to say, okay, you know what? It, it goes beyond making money. Now, it, you, you know, my business, the mis business moves from your, my head to my heart. Right, that that redefines your purpose. For me, it was helping families. I literally would sit there, sit there, and watch these families, these middle-income families that work their butts off every single day that literally had no life insurance protection, were just loaded up in debt, had no idea how their 401k operated, had no idea about the fees that they were paying, had no clue, no advisors ever sit down with them and educate them how, of how taxes worked, okay? Had no emergency fund. And I started to resonate with that because I started to think about my family and, and, and how I grew up. And I said, man, there's gotta be a defined purpose as to why I'm doing this thing. Because if there's not, if this business isn't in my heart, I can't execute it the best possible way. See, the money is the byproduct of how many people you've helped. I wanna let everybody in here know that. So if you have a low cash flow, you simply have not helped a lot of people. If you have a high cash flow, it just simply means you've helped a lot of people. And, and that's in direct correlation with, with your purpose, okay? So your why is very, very important. Now, the second thing is, you gotta have total clarity, that's a much better marker. The second one is aim, okay? So aim is what you want. Okay, so aim is what you want. Because what you want at the end of the day is the most, one of the most important things, right? What do you want in life? So I always like to break this down into goals. So my goals are gonna be as follows. So the goals, are gonna look like this. All right, so I'm gonna have six month goals, I'm gonna have one year goals, and I'm gonna have two year goals. And the reason why I break down the goals to six months, one year, and two years is because some of you guys set overall 10 year goals. You guys set like 15 year goals or five year goals or things that are very, very long. Like for example, I wanna live in a big house you know, with fancy cars and rap star lifestyle or whatever it is, right? Okay, some of you guys like, like that stuff, right? I want a big chain, I want a clock around my chest, right? <laughs> you picture Marv with one of those, man, that'd be funny. So, you know, so when you talk about, <laughs> right? So when you talk about like the long-term vision, that's your long-term vision. But that's, guys, that's 10 years in the making. Do you know that when I think about something that's 10 years forward and I'm nowhere close to that goal, I'm not motivated every single morning to wake up and chase that goal. Because psychologically, I'm motivated at the things that I could reach, they're challenging, but I, could, I can still reach them. 
And to me, having a six-month purpose, a six-month aim, and a one-year aim and a two-year aim. So for example, let's say six months, my goal is to save $10,000. Then it's to save 25. Then it's to save 50 or 100, right? Your goals need to align. I'm just using a cash flow goal, okay? Like a, like a savings goal. So some of you guys have certain goals that you want to accomplish. You got to write these goals down and literally read them aloud every single day, once or twice a day. Don't take, do, do not skip that step. One of the biggest problems that people have is that they think that they can take shortcuts to things instead of go all in, all the way. You can't take shortcuts to anything. For example, in sports, if you don't stretch, what's gonna happen more than likely? Yes, you're gonna pull, pull a muscle, you're gonna get hurt, okay? You don't stretch, you skip that step. Everybody hates stretching, but when you don't do that and you go full bore, you're gonna tear something, you're gonna get yourself hurt. Okay, what happens to a car? You don't warm it up and you just redline it. Blow up the motor. Blow up the motor. Everything requires a process. Everything requires a process. Hitting goals, the first step to hitting goals is identifying goals. The second step is to constantly remind your brain who is very easily forgetful. You didn't say an elephant never forgets, right? Well, you're not an elephant. You forget all the time. <laughs> Okay. Oh, an elephant never forgets. You ain't an elephant, man. An ele you, you forget all the time, right? Right, Len? You forget all the time, dude. I'm over there screaming at you. What? I told you to do this. Oh, I forgot, right? Okay, so that's the way it works. She's nodding her head like that's happened before, right? So, <laughs> no. so the bottom line is what? We forget things. And so sometimes when we forget how passionate we are about our goals when we first enter the business, see how fired up you get when you first start the business? The key is you've got to maintain that same enthusiasm and excitement 10 years later. I've been doing this thing over a decade, guys. Just think about that for a second. How fired up am I? You know, I'm the same way today as I was day one. That's the difference. How many guys would like to maintain your enthusiasm throughout life? I would. So guess what? Everything I do, I do it with passion or I don't do it at all. It's as simple as that. So when I talk about my aim, these are, these are goals that's close enough that I can achieve them, but they're also challenging, right? You got to make sure that you set, set, set aside some challenge for yourself. So very, very important. It's critical. So let's, let's also talk about these goals for a second too. I want you guys to, I want you guys to, you know, kind of talk, really resonate with me tonight because I want to be straightforward with you. Can I be straightforward with you guys? Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about exactly what you need to succeed at this business. And if you don't make, if you don't understand this concept, 1,000% you will fail at this. 1,000% you will fail at this, okay? There are three things that you need to accept in order for you to make it here or anything to, that you want to do, okay? Number one, if I'm training you and I'm coaching you, I expect all these three things to never be a challenge, ever be a challenge. And if it is a challenge, guess what? You better get that straight or else you're going to find yourself out of here very, very shortly. You, you won't live, okay? Here's the deal. Number one is time. You must commit, things to commit right here. Think, we call this commit. Things to commit. You must commit time. There is absolutely no way in hell that you will build an effective, long-term growing business in our industry and in our space if you don't commit time. So when people go, I work full time. Well, it sucks to be you. There's 10 hours shot. But the good news is, the good news is, is that you still got another six to seven hours before you sleep. Is that true or false? True. true. Now, how you commit that time determines how successful you're going to be. Okay? So if you commit that time to watching TV or hanging out with friends or doing things that are hobbies and, you know, whatever the case may be, then it's not going to pan out for you because there's no time committed to this business. All you do is show up to BPMs. Well, that's great. You're supposed to show up to BPMs. Now, I don't count this as time commitment. Realize this. I know that you took the time to come out here, but... Guess what? I don't count this as time commitment. This is a, you're supposed to. Does that make sense? You're supposed to. So time is what? Spent what? In the field. 
setting up appointments, making calls, making contacts, more numbers, more guests, more one-on-ones. This is the time commitment that I'm talking about when it comes down to this. And that leads me to number two. Number two, you've got to commit energy. You've got to commit energy. It's get up a high octane all the time, high energy. And so, and so when you talk about the energy level, people follow people with high energy. Have you ever noticed that the highest paid earners in anything that, that, that you do are the ones that speak, are the ones that have the stage, are the ones that are constantly sharply dressed, highly energetic, highly motivational, highly positive. Th these are the people that are on fire. If you light yourself on fire, people will come watch you burn. If you light yourself on fire, not literally, people will come watch you burn. Some of you guys are, take the gasoline right and do it, do, please. It's technically suicide, life insurance policy will not pay out. Uh, you won't be very happy. So, uh, first two years, right? Okay, first two years. Year three, you guys are okay, but still, please don't. All right, so energy, energy, right? High energy, high octane. So I want you to consider this. So it's not just the time, it's the energy. It's not just the time, it's the energy. So if you can't commit these things, you lose, okay? You lose. So, so many people, what? They make excuses and they go, oh man, I don't have any time. I don't have any time. Well, that's why you're losing. The fact that you keep saying that to yourself, I don't have any time, I get it, yeah. But, but guess what? These guys are sitting in the front row right now. They got four kids. She works early in the morning, like three in, three in the morning, and she's still here. And she's sharply dressed. Len works all day, busts his butt for his family. And he's here fired up, right? When you talk about that, now, if Len can maintain that for the next 10 years, he's going to be a multimillionaire. Like a thousand percent. This is not a this is not a theory. It's not a theory. I'm not saying, oh, maybe you'll be a multimillionaire. No, no, no. For sure you'll be a multimillionaire. Thousand percent. Here's the reason why. I have never seen anybody, you can attest to this, you've been here seven years, right? Been here seven years. Okay? I have never seen anybody that's in the business ten years or more. Constantly showing up, doing the deal, doing the business, putting in the work, growing themselves, educating families, right? I've never seen anybody 10 years in the deal or more that is not financially independent. Never seen it in my life. Never seen it in my life. So when you talk about investing the time and the energy, the third one is what most people have an issue with. And this is the one that you need to get right if this is a challenge for you because business doesn't care. It's called money, guys. It's called money. You need to invest time, energy, and money into the deal. There is no business that can function without an investment of money. So, and most people, guess what? You start a business out there, it's a lot more expensive than this one. So let's talk about the money here. It's 100 bucks for your code number, 25 bucks for your course, a couple hundred bucks for your license after you pass your test. Uh, fingerprinting, you have about 60 bucks, 50 bucks, right? And then you've got Wealth Bowl, it's a 175. Then you've got your rooms at Wealth Bowl. You can room with people, so it brings down your price. Uh, you've got gas to, to appointments. You've got car maintenance. You've got uh, T-shirts and uh, uh, shirts that uh, we give you. So you got Team Conquer shirt, Genesis shirt, Bay Shop shirt, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever it is, miscellaneous stuff here and there. You've got mentorship lunches where if you take me out to lunch, you're going to pay for me. It's as simple as that, okay? I'm not, we don't split the check. It's not how it works. I want to let me reiterate that. We don't split the check. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, oh, well, you know what? It, it, it's not, well, I had a, I had a salad, and uh, you, are you really going to tell that to, like, me or Ed Milet or somebody like that, right? Well, you know, I had the salad. Well, you, you ordered the Coke. <laughs> you, you see how stupid that sounds, right? Okay? So it's called the meal exchange, okay? You go to lunch with your upline or anybody, you're on Sophia and Wisely's team, you go to lunch with them, guess what? You are paying for them. You can't afford lunch, go meet at a park or something like that. But at the end of the day, guess what? You know, we don't accept that kind of stuff because money is very, very important. You want your team to reciprocate that to you. Yes or no? Yes. So we're taking the time out of our day to go mentor you. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. We don't get paid a fee for that. We don't say, I'm going to send you an invoice. It's not how it works. Okay? So, so you got to understand that, look, this is a give-to-get business, just like anything in life is. Whatever you receive, you must give something. There is, that, is, that is a requirement amongst life. You want a you wanna fit body? Guess what you got to do? Work out. What are you giving up? Time, energy, and money. Is that true or false? Yeah. Time, energy, and money. You got to eat right, which is money. 
right? Which gives you energy. And you got to put in the time in the gym. It's as simple as that. That's required. It's required. Okay? You want to get good at any professional sport? What are you going to do? There you go. Everything in life. You want to get good at anything in life, it's time, energy, and money. So I don't know why some people don't correlate that with WFG. I don't understand why some people don't correlate that with our business. It's the same crap, different thing. Except this one, you get good at it, you are financially independent. Does that make sense? Yes. Hopefully you guys are catching what I'm putting down here. Yes. Because you have to make this commitment in order for you to get to the next level. So we're talking about clarity here. And I want to make things very, very clear from the get-go on what's required to succeed here. I owe you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to say, no, no, it's 100 bucks to get started, and that's it. Well, that's lying to them. It's not 100 bucks to get started. It's 125 bucks to get registered and then get, sign up for your, for your uh, license course, go study for that. Then you need a couple more 100 bucks to take your test, one thing at a time, but it's all there. Yeah, you're going to have to go to Wealth Bowl. You have to go to big events. There's a convention in Wealth Bowl. Together, that's about 400 bucks just to entry, just for entry, 400 bucks. I'm sorry. You spend $400 eating out twice or three times. So people, oh, I don't have 400 bucks. Uh, hold on a second. Yes, you do. See, saving money and create, coming up with the money, it's never an I can't, right? It's an I won't. It's not an I can't. It's always an I won't. Always remember that. So when you challenge your recruits, you challenge your prospects, you challenge your people, remember, they always have the money. The problem is that you didn't create enough value for you to take that money. See, money is a dead thing, OK? Money is a dead thing. And, and guess what? It's a tool. Everybody has it. It's just, do they want to give it? See, when people think, think things are a cost, then they don't want to give it, because they'll never see it back. But when you frame it like an investment, an investment is something that I get back going forward. So our business is very simple. It's the concept of you give me $10 when you don't need it, and I'm going to give you $100 when you do need it. It's as simple as that. That's our policies too, is it not? Yes? yes. OK, so this is something I want everybody to commit to. Got to be on board with that. So I'm going to leave this up there for that to marinate a little bit, right? It's like preparing a meal, OK? <laughs> so number three. We got, the, we got the purpose, we got the aim. Number three is you need a plan. You need a plan. And the plan is called the how. The how. So the purpose is the why. What you want is the aim. The plan is the how. It is crazy to me how some people think that they can go through life and in a business without a plan. They're just going to wing it, right? You cannot wing it and make it here. Everything that successful people do, they work off a detailed schedule. It's, there's a plan. There's a plan of focus. Like, we wake up in the morning, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Before, like, tomorrow, I know my day. My whole day is planned tomorrow. You guys get it, right? My whole day is planned. If it is not on my schedule, I don't execute it. It's as simple as that. So when I wake up in the morning, I know exactly who I'm training. I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly who I'm meeting with. And I, I know exactly what information I'm going to deliver to those people. Something reschedules, I know I have a backup. I know exactly what I'm going to do if something reschedules. I'm going to make phone calls. Okay, I'm going to contact people. WFG is a contact sport. The more people you contact, the higher chance, higher likelihood you have of landing somebody like me. Imagine if you recruited a guy like me on your team. Guess what? Game over. You are financially independent. Do you know that my, my direct upline my direct upline is getting ready to make almost half a million dollars doing nothing, just overriding me. Do you realize that? His projected income in 2020 is about a half a million dollars, like doing nothing. 40 grand a month doing nothing. 41 Gs a month. Let me reiterate that, doing nothing. And by the way, that pension's going to grow, yes? Yes. Then it'll be 750. Then it'll be a million. Then it'll be 1.5. Then it'll be 3 million. Then it'll be 6 million. Just sitting around, sitting around overriding me and doing nothing. That is awesome. <laughs> People go, wow, you must, be, you must feel like shit. No, I feel great. I think it's awesome. It just shows the power of the system. And granted, by the way, that dude, the one that overrides me, he waited eight years to get me. Think about that for a second. He stuck it out through BPM after BPM after BPM, driving far distances, right? 
dealing with his baby mama drama, right? Got some of that. It's all good. And then guess what? Kept staying in the field. Kept making the calls. Didn't make excuses. Shows up to every meeting. Every meeting. Credit to him. Finally lands one dude that changes life. One dude changes life. Eight years into the business. Do you know how most people would have quit by then? Do you have any idea that most people are already on to the next thing? Oh, let me go try this thing. And then you spend a bunch of money and that doesn't work out. No, let me go try this thing. And then you spend a bunch of money and that doesn't work out. Dude, you have a proven system with a proven mentor, with a proven office, in a proven company, in a proven industry. I think the problem is sometimes you take it for granted. I genuinely feel that sometimes you take it for granted. You, th you have it so good. You're like those kids that have it so good that they don't even know how they have it. Does that make sense, yes or no? Yes. Like there are some kids that are out there right now that complain about not having the best Mercedes. You understand that? There are like 16-year-old kids right now, as we speak, that are having a fight with their parents as we speak. Right now, it's about 8 o'clock, 8.25 at night. They just got off a of class, okay? And they literally drove home in their C class, and they're bitching about why they don't have an E class or an S class AMG. Just, just think about that concept for a second. These kids are spoiled as shit, and guess what? At the end of the day, they don't appreciate what they have. They take it for granted. True? True? And that is the exact same reason why those same kids will fail in life. Because when they go, oh, I'm successful. No, no, no. I used to say this in high school. We, had a, we used to have a couple kids, a couple kids that we went to school with that drove BMWs. And I was the worst guy in the world because I say things like it is. I started doing that when I was like 15 years old. Get your little permit, right? Hey, let's go, let's go, let's, let, we'll take my car. I said, no, 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 we'll take your dad's car. They go, well, no, no, it's mine. I said, yeah, but who cut the check? I was that guy. I was an asshole, dude. Right? Straight up. Maybe I was a little jealous because I didn't have that, right? But hey, I was going to make everybody else feel it. <laughs> feel me? Right? I was that guy. I was that kid. I told it like it is. Hey, look. Hey, here, here's the deal. When you talk about people that tell, tell it like it is, just remember this. Hey, you might not like what they say, but we'll never stab you in the back. It's always the quiet ones, the, the, the people that say nice things to your face. They're all the ones that turn around and stab you in the back. Always remember that. Always remember that. Somebody's a little too sweet to you, guess what? You bet your ass, they're turning around, they stab you in the back, they talk some shit. You might not like what I say all the time, but at least you know I'm going to be straightforward with you. It's a straight shot. You know that I'm not going to mess with your family, I'm not going to mess with your money, and I'm not going to mess with your success. Quite the, quite the opposite. I'm going to enhance every one of those things. I'm going to augment every single one of those things, man. That is the goal. So when we talk about like next level stuff, I was that kid, man. I was like, dude, let's take your dad's car. Who cut the check? Right? And then I ended up not going to the party. Sometimes by choice, sometimes not by choice. <laughs> I mean, that was, that's why I was so focused. I spent more time on baseball. I spent more time on doing things that, 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 that got me ahead, that got me further. I spent more time focused on this right here and on this. So when you talk about real leaders, when you talk about real leaders, I'm going to give you the, the fourth one is what real leaders do, okay? The real leaders out there, they have clarity. Clarity, by the way, you've got to have clarity on all of these things. It's not enough to have a purpose and not enough to have an aim, not enough to have a plan. You need clarity on all three of these things and this fourth one right here, which is communication. Communication. You need clarity with communication. And here's what I mean by that. Real leaders, okay? The real leaders in business. I'm going to tell you how I got big, how I got big really fast. How many of you guys want to know that? How we got big fast, okay? Remember, when you enter a business or you become an entrepreneur, it's not about getting there. It's about how fast you get there. People go, oh, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. Well, yeah, that's up to you. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme, right? But then again, that is up to you. I don't know about you, but if it was up to me, I would rather get rich quick than slow. Yes or no? Yes. I have the five-year plan or the 20-year plan. Which one works better? Five. five years. So guess what? You know how you get big quick? All real leaders do this. First of all, communication to yourself is very, very important. Communication to yourself. So people go, wow, who, who do you communi communicate with? Who do you talk to? Who do you, 
venture off and reach out to, okay? The reality is, is that self-belief and positivity is first, is number one over everything. Self-belief that I communicate, that I am awesome, that I believe in myself, that I can do this thing, whether I know everything or don't know everything, which none of you guys know everything. I don't even know everything. Okay? If I knew everything, I, I could tell what that other person was thinking. I have a good idea of what they're thinking because of my experience. But again, I don't know everything. If I knew everything, dude, we'd be freaking billionaires. We're still in the M's. We're not in the B's. We're playing too small. Like, I genuinely, feel, I genuinely believe that. A couple hundred million, pff, we're, we're still in the M's. Got to get to the B's. B's, right? Billions. And then T, trillions, right? Some of you guys are thinking too small. Some of you guys are not even 100,000. 250, 250K, come on. Let's go. Catch up. Life is passing you by. Life is passing you by. Because guess what? You're not communicating belief and positivity to yourself. To yourself. Hey, look, if you want other people to believe in you, how, how can other people believe in your cause and what you do so wholeheartedly if you don't even believe in yourself. You are still questioning whether you can win here or not. That's crazy talk. That is crazy to me. Every single day when you, you, you think about, man, can I win here or not? That has got to be something you automatically communicate with yourself and say, you know what, dude? I am meant to be here. I am not here by accident. Nobody just suits up on a Wednesday night and shows up to a BPM at 7 o'clock by accident. Like, you are not here by accident. You are missionaries. You are pioneers. You are evangelists. Evangelists, right? Think about that for a second. You guys are the next wave. You guys, this is not a, this is not a business. It's a movement. Like, when you start to understand that that's what we're about... That is when life gets really good really fast. See, my level of understanding and my clarity and my thinking, see, I can't have a conversation like this with you without total clarity. Does that make sense, guys? Like, I, I, I am speaking from total clarity. I want you to think about the conversations you have and what, when you make a phone call versus when I make a phone call. Does that make sense? Like, I literally will tell somebody, like, some of you guys are trying to sell too much. You're trying to, you know, use a script. That's great. That's awesome. Keep on the script. But the script is a guide. It's not, a, it's not meant to be an exact definition of what you should say. Some of you guys need to talk with a little bit more passion. Like, if I'm trying to recruit Johnny, I'm trying to bring him to my BPM, sometimes you've got to talk with a little bit more passion and say, hey, listen, Johnny, I know exactly where you're at right now, man. I get it. I've been there. But I, I, think, I've found, I, I think I've found a way out. You know, and I, I truly believe in what we do. We do, and he goes, what do, you, what do you guys do? We do financial services. We teach families how to make and save money. We work with uh, 133 of the top financial brands out there that everybody's heard of. They're like household names and insurance and investments. And we teach people basic financial concepts that no, they were never taught in schools or at their jobs. Do you think that's important? Hell yeah, that's important, he's going to say. Well, guess what? We're actually looking to expand right now. We've opened three new offices in the last 90 days. In the last three months, we've opened three new offices. And we're looking to open up four, five, and six and expand the business. It's growing like wildfire right now. We work with uh, a lot of young professionals and older professionals and people that just don't understand money and they want more control of their time. Let me ask you a question. Are you exactly where you thought you'd be at your current age right now, back when you were a kid? He's going to, no, not really. Guess what? Let's catch you up to speed then. I think I found a way out. I want, I, want to, I want to show you, right? And you communicated like that with people versus you just, you know, messing around with this thing. It's based off of how you speak. It's based on your passion. We get results because we speak differently to people. It's simple as that. And they got to feel what? Your energy, your enthusiasm. They got to feel that. You understand that people do things when they feel good. Realize that everybody does things when they feel good. When they're not feeling so good, they don't do stuff. So the number one, thing, number one key to retaining people is to make them feel good. Number one key. You can recruit somebody, but how do you retain them? You retain people that make, by making them feel good. Sometimes just listening to a little bit more of what they're going through. Like your people have got to feel comfortable enough with you to go and open up and say, hey, here's what we're going through right now. Here's what we're dealing with right now. And you've got to be there a little bit. You've got to be a therapist a little bit. 
It's the way it is. That's the way it goes. That's part of business. You're not just here to make money off of them, right? You're here to build a relationship. There's a big difference. I think that sometimes people view people, others as a dollar sign, and that's the same reason why you don't win. When you view a client as a dollar sign, or you view a recruit as a dollar sign, um, and you're, you're not passionate about moving product and moving business, guess what? This thing's not gonna pan out for you. You know, my first 30 days in the business, my first, first month in the company, I moved a lot of products. I didn't get paid on that, but guess what? Look where I'm at now. I gave and I got. So many people wanna keep and then they lose. Give to get versus keep to lose, okay? That's the name of the game here. Because if you want your, mar your, your people's market to open up, then you've gotta do the same thing. And you've got to communicate this on a regular basis. So when we talk about communication, it's self-belief and it's positivity. But what people really do after you communicate the positivity to yourself, you've got positive vibes, you're excited. Guess what you've got to do? You've got to understand that a great, a great leader, all great leaders, they communicate their purpose, their aim, and their plan to as many people as humanly possible. That's what separates the best from the rest, my friend. That's what separates the men from the boys and the women from the girls. Your ability to communicate effectively your purpose, your aim, and your plan with everybody that you come across. And here's what I mean by that. You know, I, I had a meeting, I had a phone meeting, a phone conference with a guy yesterday named Danny DeFino, not Danny DeVito. <laughs> Short little bald guy. No, no, no. I'm talking about... Danny DeFino, this dude is one of the sharpest, sharpest Italian sales dudes in the greater Miami area, okay? He works for Comcast. You ever heard of Comcast? Yeah. Okay, big company. 33 years old, two kids, two boys, married, owns his home in um, Miami-Dade County, Fort Lauderdale, that area. One of John Sawyer's really good buddies growing up. Okay? Literally, John has a conversation with him, and John goes, you know what? John goes, I don't know what to say. And I, I told him, I, I called him up, and he's like, hey, what do I say to this guy? He was going to have a one-on-one -on -one with him. I said, do what I taught you, cash flow quadrant. And he goes, and then what else? Build rapport, and then what else? I said, he's your buddy, right? And he goes, yeah. I said, just have a heart-to-heart -heart chat with him. Like, talk to this dude and really explain three things. And I told him, explain your purpose, of why you're doing this business, explain your aim, what is it that you want, and explain your plan of how, you're, how we're gonna do it. Just explain that to him. He did, piqued Danny's interest, Danny's fired up, and John's like, can you do me a favor? Can you get on a phone call with, with Danny for me? I said, of course I can. I called him yesterday at 10 in the morning. And we communicated, we talked, hurricane's about to hit over there, right? And it kind of veered north, so it missed them, kind of sideswiped them a little bit, got some like 45, 50 mile an hour winds, but nothing more, which thank God, because it literally sat on, that hurricane sat on top of the Bahamas and just stayed there for a while, okay? It just stayed there, it just wrecked the Bahamas. Like the Bahamas is like toast right now, okay? And so, um, they're boarding up their homes and the whole nine, and, and, and so I call, I call Danny, and uh, we communicate, and he's on his way to an appointment, Comcast appointment. I said, Danny, what is it that you want? He goes, honestly, I'm sick and tired of making other people rich. That's how I knew that dude was a stud. I said, You're, he goes, I'm tired of making other people rich. I said, really? And, and, and so he goes, yeah, man, I've been doing it 15 years. I'm tired of, you know, and I said, you know what, I've been doing my line of work 15 years. And Danny goes, yeah, but you and I are the same age, but we're in to two totally different financial places. And this dude's making multiple six figures already, making six figures, right? His wife's a six-figure girl too, okay? So I want you to think about that, 33 years old, mid-30s. So my perfect recruit is what again? Between 25 to 35 is my, is my typically perfect recruit. I want them closer to 35 though, does that make sense? I want them in their 30s. Why? Because they've tasted shit. When you're 33, 31, 34, 36, you have tasted some shit. Yes or no? Yes. You know what corporate America is like. Those are the people I want to build. Those are the people that I want to, to invest my time, energy, and money into. Does that make sense? I want to invest my time, my energy, and my money into those people. 
You know? It's so crazy to me. I think about that all the time. Like, Len, he's got a bunch of appointments in, in Silmar. Silmar, San Fernando Valley, it's like way out there, right? Boonies and all that, right? Out there doing a KTP with a mountain goat next to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I want, man, right? I'm like, I'm like, dude, you know what? It's, it's all good. It's all good. Why? I'll drive, no problem. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's go help some people. Yes or no? Yes. Let's go help some people. That's all, that's all it's about. Oh, you're going to put some miles on your car. Yeah, that's what it's for. Cars are meant to be used. Yes or no? Yes. Use things, not people. Use things, not people. Right? Okay? Two things I want you to cut out of your life, too. Two things I want you to cut out of your life right now is processed food and processed people. Their ass is out of there. Yeah, teach that kid. You know what's up, Sheila. Teach him. As a champion. Looks like Aaron. Looks exactly like you, dude. I'm not even kidding. Like, like you could not deny that was your son. No Maury here, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> no Maury, dude, no. The results are in. Let's take a look at the boy, dude. They put it up on the screen, you know? Put the dad up there. <laughs> they put the dad up there. They put the little boy up there. They don't have to, Maury doesn't have to read the results. <laughs> he already knows. Aaron's like, ah, it's mine. <laughs> it's it <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, so it's like, that's my dad, right? So you talk about communication, right? We talk about this. This is so, so critical, so critical. So th think about what I, what I just said. Successful people, they communicate their purpose, their aim, and their plan to everybody. So I let it, literally told Danny, I said, look, man, I know you're tired of being where you're at right now, but we have the opportunity to get you out. We have the opportunity to get you out. We are opening up an office literally right next to you, man. You grew up out there, right? And he says, yeah, I grew up out there. I said, do you understand how, how awesome your network is in our business? And he goes, I don't yet, but I'm sure I will. And I said, listen, I'm going to be up there the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. I want to meet with you and your wife, and I want to sit down, and I want to literally have a powwow with John and Kristen. And, and really, you, from what I hear, you're one of the top sales guys. He goes, yep, I'm one of the top sales guys at Comcast. I'm just sick of it. I need a mentor. I need a coach. I said, great. Listen, what, days, what day works better for you, 20th or 21st? And we're just communicating it. We're going to get together, and we're going to have a powwow, and we're going to open up, open up this office. And guess what? How I knew he was a stud? He goes, well, do you guys have the office open? I said, not yet, but we will. Literally in the next probably 60 days or, just, or so, we're already looking for places. He goes, well, you let me know what, what I need to do to pitch in. He goes, you need, a couple, you, you need thousands of dollars? What do you need? You know, I'm willing to spend some of my savings on this thing. Let's make this thing happen. I know John's gonna, John and Kristen have some money saved. I've got, some, I got six figures saved, too. I'm good. Just think about that for a second. When money is not a challenge, you would shock yourself at what you could accomplish. The problem is money is always a challenge. Oh, we don't have that. We don't have that. You have a lacking. You have a lacking. And I'm telling you right now, lacking is in the mentality. It's never in the bank. Your lacking is in the mentality. It's never in the bank. So when you think about the long-term effect of you lacking money or you having a lack of resources, no, no, no. You just, you're just not resourceful. You have all the resources there. You're just not resourceful. So when we communicate this, the purpose, the aim, and the plan, literally to every human being that, they come, that, that people come across, that is how you win. Communication is key. Number five, number five is clarity on your system, on the system. Right? So clarity on the system. So... You have to understand our system, and our system is really simple. It's literally the vehicle, to kind of draw it out for you guys. It's very, very simple, okay? It's four wheels to this thing. It's build a team, build a team. It's 10 KTPs, kitchen table presentations, right? And we, we want this done in the macho market, at least 10, minimum 10, if not more. Typically, the best trainers, there's, it's, it's a lot more. Right? We want you to keep setting up appointments. Attend all meetings and big events. And then get licensed. That's number four. Get licensed. 
that's our system. Okay? When you understand, build a team, right? Why? Because you, if you, with, with a big team, you can accomplish a big dream. With a small team, can't, you, you, cannot, you cannot have a big dream and have little paychecks. You guys get it, right? You can't have a big dream and little paychecks. You've got to build a team. The bigger the team, the bigger the dream, bigger the income. Okay? 10 KTPs, kitchen table presentations. We want all this done in the macho market, most of it done in the macho market. 80% of your KTP should be macho. 80%. 80%. Why? Highest close ratio. By the way, macho market, they typically want to do the business too, yes? yes? Right? Problem is you keep recruiting kids. You keep recruiting little kids. Hey, it's okay to be young in the business. It's fine. But you can't recruit young. If you recruit young, you're dead. You sell to young people, you're dead. You got to recruit in that sweet spot, 25 to 35 and above. Okay? Attend all meetings. Why? Because if we do that without you showing up and creating this habit, your team's never going to show up. Your team is never going to show up. So here's another big thing. When it comes to retention, you need to communicate with your teammates every day. It's not enough that you just see them at BPMs. All of the people that you sign up, you now owe your commitment of what? These things to. Let's think about that for a second, right? Everybody you sign up, you owe these three to. Everybody you sign up, you owe commitment of time to train them or to make sure that they get properly trained. You owe energy and you owe money. Money is extra time, it's extra, right? You go out there, drive, gas, whatever the case may be, you, you owe that. So understanding the system is critical. Now, number six, you need clarity of price. Clarity of the price. You, you guys understand how few people really understand this right here? The price. In our business, the price must be paid for in full up front. What do I mean by the price? I'm talking about these three things. We go right back to here. Do you understand the amount of time commitment that it takes to build a massive business here? You're talking about, uh, you're trying to build a business that pays you several hundred thousand dollars that eventually you can quit your current job at and do full time. Do you think that's gonna come with a 15 hour a week commitment? Nope. This is your life. This is my life. I build my business, everything else comes, circulates around my business everything else. So the old simple, oh, we got a birthday party. That's, that's awesome, but I have a meeting. Okay, you're gonna still have that birthday party. Mm -hmm. If I can make it after my meeting, I'm there. But you don't sacrifice the meeting to go to the birthday party. Does that make sense? Yeah. Simple as that. Oh, we've got a this. Oh, good for you, but I have an appointment. I have a KTP at three o'clock. What's that? Come, come down on Wednesday night. I'll show you. <laughs> right? I have a KTP at 3 o'clock. When I'm done with that, in an hour and a half, two hours, if I can make it, and you guys are still going, I'll drop by. I'm there. Right? So even, even birthday parties, even get-togethers, birthday parties, even on our team. You understand that? Like some of my top leaders are having a birthday party or a baby shower, right? One of my leaders just had a baby shower. And guess what I said? I'm there. Now, do you know that I completely flopped? There was an appointment that I had to do at 3.30, and the baby shower was from like, what time was it, like 2 to like 6? Like 2 to 6? And I just got to the baby shower in Irvine, and I totally messed it up, and my appointment was there at 3.30 waiting for me in Walnut. Okay? Well, guess what? Sat through the traffic, raced over to Walnut, knocked out the appointment, made it right, and then drove back to Irvine and caught the tail end of the, of the party. Why? Because that baby shower is going to go there with or go on with or without me. People are still happy. They're just happy that you showed up. Does that make sense? Yes. So they're just happy you showed face. That's it. Go over there, show face, drop off your gift, and do your thing. You're busy. Do you know what that? Do you know? Do you understand that when you when you, when you value your time and you're busy, people also value your time. 
The problem is you don't value your time and you're there for everybody and you're not there for yourself and your family and your business and your opportunity. So when people go, oh, well, business should be separate. It should always be family first. Yeah, it is family first. If let's say my son or my wife or you know my parents were having a heart attack, I would be there. Yes or no? Yes. Family is first. Only life and death. Only life and death. Oh, but you're missing this and you're missing that. Yeah, there's going to be plenty more. There's going to be plenty more. Well, what if you die the next day? Well, then I die the next day, dude. But I'm not going to go out like a chump. I'm not going to go out like just lounging around, just hanging out with my family while life passes me by and all the great opportunities pass me by and I didn't leave my mark on this world. It is what it is. Life is what it is. But guess what? Because I made the sacrifice, hey, you're going to sacrifice. You know, it's so funny to me how people don't, people think that 10 years is a long time to get successful and rich, but they don't think that 40 years is a long time to stay broke at a job. It's so funny to me when I think about that, right? So when you talk about long term, your commitment, your commitment level, you got to understand what the price, don't do this if you're not willing to pay the price. You got to be willing to pay the price. You just went to a big event and convention. I'm still fired up after that event. And we're going to fire you up, fire you guys up more in Wealth Bowl. And you're going to learn a lot at Wealth Bowl. Wealth Bowl is going to be amazing. I get to look like James Bond at Wealth Bowl. You understand? Right? Gold and I. What? Oh, yeah, we are. Damn right we are. Yeah, that's going to be. I literally texted Gian and Helica. I was like, dude, this is going to be a beat down. It's going to be a beat down. I mean, it is going to be the biggest donkey stomping ever in this hierarchy. In this hierarchy's history, it'll be the biggest massacre ever. There are going to be leaders that will be sitting there. On paper, they're at my level, and you are going to just visually see them just wiped from the floor. I am that competitive. I have beaten them all, and I will continue to beat them all. Okay? We are number one, and everybody knows that. That's why nobody messes with us at Momentum Mondays or anything like that. Okay? We are number one. And we hold that, that candle proud. You know why? Because nobody can outwork us. I want you guys to understand that, look, I understand the price. The question is, do you? Do you understand the price? The price is paid in full up front. Here, here's the deal. Most people, they don't understand the price. Instead, they negotiate the price. Oh, but you know what? I, that's a little too much. I'll do this, but you know, I'll do a little bit of this, and I'll do some of this. Wrong. Right? I'm going to spend some time here, but I'm going to get it done. No, you're not. You're not going to see if people are only marginally focused at a goal, you can't get it done. You got to be all in. Got to be all in. When you're all in, you get it done. When you're not all in, you don't get it done. The Sawyers are all in. We're already setting up the whole nine. He goes, man, you come out in Florida, it's going to be fruitful. We got some KTPs. We got some good people that we want you to talk to to, to help bring in. And we're looking at real estate right now. We're looking at office space. We're, we're going all in, man. That's what's required. It's the price. You don't negotiate price. The price is the price. The price of success is the price of success. There is no negotiation. There is no, did anybody read an autobiography of somebody that went, oh, you know what? The price was, it was supposed to be paid in full up front, but I found a shortcut, and I, I went the back door where I didn't have to do any work, and I could just make all the birthday parties. It was great. And here's how I did it. Anybody read that book? I've never read that book. I don't know of anybody on planet Earth that got successful at anything doing that, not making the sacrifice and paying the price. That's the name of the game is sacrifice. Yes? yes. But you've got to get fired up about that sacrifice. That's the key. You've got to get excited about the sacrifice versus dreading the sacrifice. Some of you guys still dread the price, dread the sacrifice. Oh, shit, here we go again, right? Hey, look, if that's you, 
you better switch your mentality because if you're not fired up about the price, you can't get other people on your team fired up about that price. Right? What you do, your team will do. Threefold, good or bad. Very important one here. Number seven. You got to have clarity of values. Clarity of values. Values. Is that important? That's very important, isn't it? Right? When you don't understand values and you don't have honesty and integrity, you are not a leader, nor can you build something that lasts long term. Remember, you are here to build something that lasts long term, and you can't do that without total integrity. Here's, here's the deal. Honesty just simply means you have a straightforward approach, and you're, you're straight up. It doesn't mean you're an a-hole. Some, you know, a lot of people, they associate honesty with being an a-hole. It's not true. It's not true at all. Honest people, again, will tell you the truth, but they won't stab you in the back. You might not like what I say or how I say it, but at least you know it's the honest truth. Integrity, definition of this is simply doing what you say you're going to do. Doing what you say you're going to do. And always doing the right thing even when no one's looking. That's integrity. Okay? You don't follow through with what you say you're going to do. Guess what? There's no integrity there. I follow through with what I say I'm going to do. I told Guillermo I was going to write. He goes, how many points are you going to write this month? I was like, like 45,000? And I didn't, I didn't do 45,000. I did 70. I did 70,000. Sorry. <laughs> Almost doubled it. I apologize. OK? So when you understand that it's integrity, it's like I don't know how to underachieve. I don't know about you guys. But like I don't know how to underachieve. Like That's not in my genetics. It's just not in my genetics. I've been winning for over a decade. It's, like losing is not a part of my language. I don't, I don't speak it. I don't associate myself with it. Like you can tell, like when you're at a next level, guys. I want, I want you guys. I want to bring you guys up a level. And the reason why I want you to want to bring you guys up a level is because when you associate yourself, you can al already tell when you communicate with somebody that's in a mediocre mindset or mediocre thinking. Like like small minded thinkers and small mindset, you can already tell when you communicate with them. Boom, they're small minded. Boom, they're mediocre minded. They're, they're such they're such small thinkers. And, I, and we rarely communicate because nobody ever wants to talk to me. You know why? Because they know I'm going to challenge them. They know I'm going to call them out on their bullshit. That's the reason why they never message me. It's true. Like, being a leader is one of the loneliest jobs in the world. It is. Because you don't, wanna, you don't want the truth. You want to talk to people that you get along with. You know, everybody's got clicks. I've noticed that in our business. Everybody's got little clicks. Everybody's got little clicks. Except nobody, nobody clicks with me. I've noticed that. Nobody clicks with me. Everybody got little clicks that make them feel comfortable, right? Make them like, everybody gets along with everybody. And I'm like, oh, one big family, we're this, we're that, we're that. Yeah, no growth. No growth. How's that working out for you? Hanging out with your little click. By the way, some of you guys in this room are better than the people you hang out with. But, you, you know, when you, when you talk about this, some of you guys, and this goes for your life too, okay? This is simul simultaneous. I'm just kind of separating all this stuff, right? But let's, let's talk about this. Let's say you're, you're this level right here, okay? But you hang out with people at this level. Okay, you're better than them, right? Cash flow's higher than them, you're better, you got a better market, you're, you're, you're just a better recruiter, better prospector. Have you ever considered that you might be this good, but because you hang out with these people, you're not there, man, you're here too. It erases everything that you're trying to fight so hard for because you, you are who you hang out with. Once you think about it, the people that you so, you're, associate yourself with, they're not doing much better than you, and you're not doing much better than them. You're kind of like right there. Meh. Kind of like right there. But you get along. That's why you hang out. 
and you don't want to hang out, and, and people here, I guarantee you, everybody that's here, which is the ma majority of the crowd, not everybody. If you, if, you, if you think I'm talking about you, I probably am. Um, so let's talk about this, OK? If, if you're right here, and what I would do is I'd hang out with people here. Because this elevates you. You have no choice but to elevate your standard to meet these people at this level if you're, if you're hanging out with these people. Does that make sense? Because they're not going to put up with your bullshit. They're going to call you out on all your bullshit. I would be getting around higher identity leaders as much as you possibly can in our hierarchy. So SMDs, ring earners, things of that sort. Like I, I would be hanging out with these people like regularly. Their mindset would, is, is a lot different than the people that are not at that level, OK? And so, but the problem is most people don't like to hang out with these people because guess what? These guys make these guys very uncomfortable. These guys, don't never, they never call these people. They never go to lunch. They never do like business together. They never, they never do anything. They just here, but they just kind of associate themselves with everybody here. Comfort zone. You understand? You go out of your job to come here to be out of your comfort zone. Don't get in a comfort zone in a business, especially a business at th of, of this caliber. You guys got it? Yes. A couple more. Number eight accountability. Accountability. So clarity of accountability. Are you clear with the people or with your upline that you're accountable to? Are you clear of who that is and how often you're accountable with that person that's training you? Okay? So when we understand accountability, you are accountable upwards, not downwards. Okay? So you are not, if this is, if let's say for example, this is you, right? You are accountable upwards, the person that directly recruited you in or your upline SMD or above. Okay? You are not accountable to this guy right here. You probably shouldn't be hanging out with that guy. And you're not accountable to this guy right here. And you're not account definitely not accountable to this guy right here. You're accountable up. By the way, crap rolls upwards, not downhill. Never talk to your downline or anybody that's underneath you about how bad of a day you're having. Do you know that you can never tell if I'm having a bad day or not? Have you ever thought about that? Like none of you have ever been able to tell, man, Eric is just having a shitty day. None of you ever have said that about me. Why? Because I won't let you know I'm having a bad day. I wear a smile on my face 100% of the time. I'm excited 100% of the time. Why? Because I see the silver lining in everything that happens in my life because things don't happen to me, they happen for me. And I've adopted that. That's my mentality. Things don't happen to me, they happen for me. So when you talk about accountability, like you should, you should have somebody that you're accountable to. Like what did, what did you do all day? How many appointments did you set? How many guests do you have? How many one-on-ones have you booked? Right? Are you qualified for the next contest? Are you qualified for the next big event? Like you should already like keep a log of that and say, all right, I'm two to three away from the next event or the next contest. I'm 5,000 points away from my senior associate promotion or my MD promotion. Or I'm, you know, we're a couple thousand dollars away from hitting our next cash flow milestone, from reaching 100 grand, or from doing 150 or 200, whatever it is. You should be accountable regularly. That's how you keep it going. Remember, we forget things. We forget how passionate we are about something when we first join it because we don't understand how to become accountable and how to stay accountable. You think this is good. Wait till meeting after the meeting. <laughs> Lastly, rewards. You have to have total clarity of what's in it for you. This is all great, but at the end of the day, you have got to have total clarity of what's in it for you. Oh, don't cry. Your dad's numbers aren't that bad. It's all good. I said they weren't that bad. Aaron's such a stud, dude. Okay. Rewards. 
What's in it for you? Why are you doing this thing? What is in it for you? If you go all out and you accomplish the big one, what's in it for you? Get it? Yeah. All this, it's not enough to know it. It's not enough to do it. it you've got to have clarity. It's the number one word associated with everybody who's successful by far. And you can tell when somebody's totally clear about what we're doing here and where we're headed. Hopefully, you're clear about what we're doing and where we're headed. Go get your guests, guys. 15-minute break. We will be right back here in 15 minutes. Do not leave. Thank you. See you at the top. Thank you. so cool you know uh, let me just start by saying this uh, it is one of the best decisions that we've made to do this live stream and start to really you know uh, really really help us out and expand our message um, this is literally people from Florida are watching this right now uh, people from uh, well it's part of my Florida teams in Greece right now so they're in Santorini um, so they're watching from Santorini <laughs> It's like six in the morning over there. Uh, and then it's and then people are watching here and then people are watching in Walnuts right now. How cool is that? I mean when you talk about like could you imagine that one day we were gonna do a live stream and like fifty offices are gonna be able to listen to what we've gotta say? Is that cool or what? I mean, to me, that's just like amazing. That's like next level growth. And uh, you know, if you don't if you don't grow, you're dying. And when you talk about moving up in the world, I mean, that's, that's got to be what it is. It's got to be about, you know, forward movement. Uh, the key is to, get, is to not get left behind. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the key. Never get left behind. Um, so I want to just give it up to, to our team. We got um, uh, David Valdivia, Jeff Wynn, Aaron Flores that really, really contributed to this. Um, all of you guys, I mean, this is, can we give them a round of applause? I mean, it's just phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal job um, just to expand us, man. That's so cool. That is so cool. Um, I, we need to go to dinner, guys, and I'm not even kidding. We'll, we'll, we'll do some dinner. Uh, we'll do something. Um, just, you know, babe, if you can help, help us book that, that'd be great um, for, the, for the coming weeks. But, you know, we just want to recognize everybody for doing such a great job. Uh, we're fired up. We're excited. But as good of a job as we're doing, we could do a better job. Okay, so always remember this: champions. We never pat each, we never pat ourselves on the back when we're doing a good job because that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, we're supposed to do a good job. We're supposed to win. We're supposed to, you know, be great leaders. We're supposed to, you know, lead by example. We're supposed to do the right thing. And we're supposed to help families. That's what we're supposed to do. So we don't get, you know, hand claps for things that we're supposed to do. We get hand claps for milestones. We get hand claps for the extraordinary things that we do as a direct result of all the minimalistic small things that we do. It's a compounded effort over that span of time. So just understand that that's just how it works. So I want to talk to you guys um, to I want to talk to you guys about specific ways of how to attract, train and retain leaders, okay? So just to let you guys know, uh, pretty you okay back there, Abis? All good? Okay, all good. Okay, just just double check. I don't know if you saw a bug or something like that, but no, I was gonna sneeze and then I swallowed my gum, so it's caught somewhere. Oh, that's the worst. I know what it's like to have like a small little thing like caught there, but a piece of gum. Hopefully, it passes through. Um, so uh, <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> TMI, guys, TMI. All right, so there's TMZ and there's TMI. Uh, so that is TMI. So let's let's talk let's talk Turkey here for a second, okay? So attract, train, and retain, build and build leaders. Um, I want to let you guys know right now. Um, I, I don't know. It's it's just kind of like the perfect storm. I'm kind of listening to what's going on, but a lot of what we're doing is you know we are focusing on um, you know really attracting leaders. But I'll tell you where leaders come from. Leaders come from middle-income families. Just remember that. Great leaders in this company, in our business, come from middle-income families. Not poor families, 
not necessarily just poor families, okay? But middle income families. The most leaders are found in middle income families, which is about 93% of society, and lower to higher middle income families, okay? And they are found and they are mentored and eventually built. That is how you grow this business. Make no mistake about it. So, you know, literally, I'm just starting to paint this picture too. You know, Len, I don't know if you can start to see, man, I'm starting to paint this picture. Of, of him and Alma one day owning their own office pretty soon, right? It could be in the next year, it could be in six months, it could be a year and a half, depends on how fast they grow. But the reality is, is that however long it takes, he's gonna make it happen. That's a, that's, a, that's a determined man right there. And here's why I bring this up. I wanna just present to you every single new leader that I build, um, leader after leader after leader after leader after leader. Uh, we just hired on two new directs for Len and Alma right now. Um, one of them works for T-Mobile, so he related to David. And then the other one is in construction. And, uh, and so both of them are in their 30s. Both of them are uh, either married or have kids. And they're motivated to get out of there and start building a business. One of the, one of the gentleman's wives actually works, and not, not works, grew up right next to Monica. Okay? Her whole market is next to the Walnut, Walnut office. How do you think that's going to go? <laughs> anyway, so I was just bringing that up to Kevin. It's just so crazy how you attract great players, potentially, when you're on top of your game. I'm going to say that again. You attract great players when you're on top of your game. You can't attract great people when you're not fired up and on top of your game. Does that make sense, guys? I don't know if I'm like, like resonating with you guys tonight, but, but the truth is, is that you cannot attract great players in our business without being 100% on top of your game. So let's talk to you, let's talk to you about specifically, if you want to attract, you must be attractive, okay? In order to attract, you must be attractive. And when I say attractive, it doesn't mean physically attractive, okay? It doesn't mean physically attractive, right? For some of us, it's thank God, right? I'm just kidding. Okay, that wasn't funny? Fine. <laughs> Forget you guys, man. Okay, so at the end of the day, right, it's, it's about, it's not necessarily physically attractive. What it's about, I'll tell you this right now, what it's about is about being attractive in a variety of areas. And here are those areas. Number one, your preparation. People that are prepared are the most attractive. Have you ever thought about that before? The most prepared people are the most attractive. Let me give you an example. Um, anybody that was not quite an A student in school, we can raise your hand. Wow, whoa, shit. Okay, guys, not everybody at once, right? <laughs> okay, if you weren't an A student at school, isn't it true that most of the bad students, they copied off of, right, the A students? Is that, is that safe to say? Okay, you probably leaned over, glanced over a couple times, right? Looked at Juan shaking his head like he did everything right. Um, I don't. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, that's true. Not all of them are smart. That's true, right? That's true because the smart ones work for me. Uh, so at the end of the day, I want you to think. <laughs> it's kind of true. But when you think about the <laughs> when you think about the long term effect of this, think about this, right? The truth is, is that some people they copied off of copied off of other people to pass tests and to you know copy homework and things of that sort so is it safe to say that the most attractive person in that situation was the smart kid yeah. okay well why is that person attractive the preparation the preparation because the dumb kid knew that the smart kid was prepared does that make sense yes. and because the dumb kid didn't prepare He's not dumb because he's dumb. He's dumb because he didn't prepare. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he didn't prepare. So naturally, the most attractive person in that situation is the prepared person. All the professional athletes that you guys watch and admire are idolized. Why are they attractive? They're prepared. They're prepared. They're the first ones on the court. They're the last ones to leave. They're the ones that are working on their free throws, working on their shots, uh, working on, you know, they're in the gym the most, right? These people are prepared to compete. That's the reason why they're attractive. And so guess what they attract? Fans. Guess what fans do? They buy tickets. 
Guess what tickets do? They create revenue. They sell out arenas and sold out arenas create big revenue for first class teams. And not necessarily the team, sometimes they just go for the player. Does that make sense? Do you know how, how many years LeBron James had not so good a team? But he sold out arenas because he was LeBron James. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. So the reality is, is that the most prepared people win. So you need to be prepared. That's how you become attractive. I don't know about you, but when, when you're prepared, you can tell somebody's prepared. You can tell somebody that when, when they're prepared for a talk, you can tell somebody that's prepared to dominate when they're prepared to go out there and win. You can tell when they're on their game and prepared. Okay? So that's number one. Number two is your message. What's up, Alma? Just steps in. I'm here, right? <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's, it's prepared people win, but number two is you become attractive through your message, through your message, okay? So what you say, your message. So what are you conveying? So what's your message? What should be your message? Your what? Purpose. Hello? Your purpose. That's your message, okay? Your message from now to forever till you're successful needs to be your purpose, your aim, and your plan. And it needs to be broadcasted to friends, to family, to acquaintances, to the dude on the street right there, right? To the dude you meet at the gas station, to the dude that you meet at the bookstore, to the, to the woman that you meet at, you know, buying perfume, to this person and that person, everybody. That needs to be your purpose, your aim, and your plan. You build rapport, and then you automatically throw your purpose, your aim, and your plan. You see if they're in or not. That's the deal. That's how you become successful. You want to know how to become successful? That is how you do it. So again, to retain people, you need to be attractive. What are, what, what's, your, what's your goal? You need to attract. Attract people. So you must be attractive, okay? They say not necessarily just physically, but guess what? Does your physical appearance matter? Yes. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. Look at Johnny, dude. Johnny, stand up for a second. Dude, I, I, I saw, dude, I saw this dude, Johnny. I was like, man, yeah. he turned around for these, group, these, these people to see it. I'd buy from this guy, okay? So let me tell you, I saw this blazer. I was like, woo, that's, that's bright, right? Almost lost my eyesight. And then, and then I looked at that, and I said, man, look at this. You got the red stripes right here, right? I just noticed that. He's got the red stripes right here. Um, and then he just, wrong, he just wore the wrong tie. If he had my tie on, he'd be killer, right? Be killer. You look like a schoolboy here. This look like a professional. Okay, so just to let you know. But that's good. He's he's on the right track. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. It's on the right track. So give it up for Johnny. That's awesome. Okay. Hey, hey, Marv, Marv, stand up for a second. Stand up for a second. Look at this guy right here. Okay, so I'd buy from this guy. I'd buy from this guy. Okay, so big Marv right here. He's got that that light. Marvin Maglumbine is wearing a light, light blue, sky blue, baby blue colored blazer, okay? Uh, so, okay, I'd buy from this guy, okay? Just think about, just, hey, look, investing in your wardrobe, investing in your hygiene, investing in, a, in these areas matter. They make you either attractive, you either attract or you repel. Remember that, okay? You either attract or you repel in this business. One or the other. You either attract or you repel. And now here is how you find out if you're attractive or not. Do people follow you? Okay? Tom was like, hell yeah. <laughs> He's like, yes. It's quick. Right? Okay? Think about that. Do people follow you? Okay? When you grow a team, do people, do you retain them based off of these things being intact. Okay, so preparation. Number two is your message, right? What you convey, which are the purpose, the aim, and the plan. Number three is the way you walk. Successful people walk fast. They don't walk slow. So when you talk about the way you walk is very, very important because the way you walk, when you walk slow, you're negative. You're stationary. You don't, your biorhythm is down. When you walk fast, your heart rate is up, right? You're focused on getting somewhere from point A to point B, okay? You, you cannot walk slow and be successful. Nobody walks slow. You ever notice that in the movies? Everybody always depicts 
The people that walk slow, the kid that walks slow with his hands in his pockets, that's another thing. Don't put your hands in your pockets. None of you guys should speak with your hands in your pockets. Ever. Like ever. It's almost awkward for me to talk to you like right now. You know why? Because I'm so used to hand gestures. I'm so used to being in this box right here and using hand movements. Do you know that hand movements, they help you enunciate things? They help you follow through on what you're going to say, and they help you get through a talk. Your hand gestures is part of your body language. It's part of the way you deliver. It's, it's part of the way you speak, and it should be forever a part of your overall movement. You see, when we speak, it's movement. The problem is we think that what comes out of our mouth is separate from the rest of our bodies, and that's not true. It's all one motion, guys. It is all one motion. You know, like, for example, I used to be a pitcher. And when, you, when, when I was a pitcher, it's all one movement. It's not your arm. People go, oh, we got a strong arm. That's all that matters. The reality is, is that pitching is about 70% your legs. That's what people don't realize. It starts at your core. It's 70% your leg. It's only about 20% your arm. So to be honest, after I, pitch, I got done pitching a game, my legs and my core are more tired than my arm. Think about that for a second. Why? Because pitching is a whole body type of thing, guys. It's a whole body type of thing. For example, shooting a basketball correctly. Those of you guys that follow basketball. Shooting a basketball correctly is not just your form up here. It's your footwork. Yes or no? Yes. It's your footwork. you got to square it to the basket. For me, for example, your, my toe needs to be about maybe half an inch in front. My, my right toe needs to be about half an inch in front of my left toe to get off the best possible shot. It's all form, guys, but it's your entire body that takes that form. Okay? It's the same thing when you speak. You notice how I speak. I use hand gestures. I almost don't know how to not use hand gestures when I speak. Because it helps me deliver. It helps me focus. I know exactly what I'm trying to convey. You know what else, ha you know what else, you know what else hel helps? Your vocabulary. You need to read a damn book. What some people need to do. Some of y'all need to read a damn book or two. Maybe the dictionary. Learn some words. Learn some bigger SAT words. Would that help? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Learn the difference. For example, principle is what? What you invest. Interest is what? Darren's laughing. Why are you laughing, bro? No, no, he didn't just pass it out because he corrected me one time. He remembers that. I'll never let him live it down. Corrected me one time in a meeting. Never let him live it down for the rest of my life. I was going off. I had a great point, and this guy corrects me on a spelling error. <laughs> all the guys that are studs in here are just putting their heads down like, you gotta be kidding me right but, but hey it's all good he's still here right so the bottom line is still here and, he, and we love him so the bottom line is look long term okay think about it this way interest is what accumulation accumulation okay what have you accumulated interest wise Okay, learn how to use different types of words to, to phrase things. Because the reality is, is that if you don't understand different words, there's no way that, that, you, can, that you can win. Um, big one here. When, you, when you're with a client or a prospect or a recruit, do you know what really helps? Make everything about them, not about you. Make everything about them, not about you. Do you know how many people just love hearing themselves talk? It is, the, it is one of the biggest plagues ever. You wonder why you don't close? Here's the reason why. You love hearing yourself talk. You love just talk, 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 talk. You talk too much. You give either too much information, either give too much information, which is an information overload, right? Or you talk too much about yourself. You know the worst thing in the world? You talk too much about yourself? Hey, here's the reality. Nobody gives a shit. Everybody know. Everybody wants to know exactly what's in it for them. Everybody wants to talk about themselves. Let them talk. I love building rapport. I relate about myself, but I don't spend a very, very much. I don't spend very much time on myself. Does that make sense? Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. That's how we close. So when we talk about the way you walk, that directly leads leads to the next one, which is the way you carry yourself. 
How do you carry yourself? Do you know that there are certain leaders in the company, there are certain people that don't necessarily care don't necessarily carry themselves the best way. Like for example, I can tell you this right now, when I walk into a room, the entire aura of that room changes. The whole aura of that room adjusts and changes. The energy is different. Second you walk in, it's like people feel it's like I, I will literally go to a wealth bowl or an elite circle or somewhere. And, and we'll be getting ready, we'll finish having lunch or something like that, and we walk into the room, and I'm about getting ready to speak, but I walk from the back of the room, and it's crazy. It's almost like the second I walk in, somebody looks around and sees me. They, they like, feel it. Does that make sense? It's almost like you you be focused. I walk in the room. Somebody's here. <laughs> Not kidding. It's the truth. Not even kidding. And then they look, and they're like, and then they nudge the person next to them, and everybody starts looking. The whole aura of the room changes. How do you carry yourself? You know, Ed, this world is energy. Yes. If people can't tell that you just walked in a room, guess what? You are not giving off enough energy. It is not self-absorbed. It is not arrogance. It is confidence. Like, I know when Ed, Ed Milet walks in a room. Second Ed hits the room, everyone's like, it's Ed, Ed's here. You guys understand? Isn't it true? Yeah. Right? You guys been a wealth? Ed's, hey, Ed's, Ed's over there. Hey, every, every, everybody see Ed? Every, everybody see me? He's, he's over there. He's on the left. Is it true? Yes. Same thing happens with all the big players. All the big players have the same aura. That same aura. Okay? And I've noticed that. The second I walk in a room, boom, it's there. Everybody says, there, there he is. What aura are you giving off based off how you carry yourself? How do you walk? Shoulders back, laser focus, confidence. Not arrogance, it's confidence. Do you know what's really attractive? Confidence. That's really attractive. You can sell with confidence. You got to know some stuff, but you can sell with confidence. Reality is the best salespeople are the most confident people in the world because the most certain person wins every battle. Every single battle, the most certain person wins, and it's all about how you carry yourself, how you dress to the freaking detail. Got my initials on, on my cuffs, right? Brown Rolex. Don't buy Rolex. Brown Rolex. Brown shoes. Brown belt. Maroon tie. Maroon hanky. Right? Gray suit. Every pink shirt to offset it. Stripes on the shirt, which means what? This has to be solid. You understand? Every detail. Every detail. Tie clip that fits perfectly. It's not too big. You know, some of you guys wear tie clips that go all the way out to here. Okay? It's not the way you're supposed to do it. Okay? Your tie clip should take out about 80% of your tie. 80% of your tie. Go buy some new tie clips. Those of you guys that like way up, like a, you get like a buck tooth, Right? Like a real long tooth, right? <laughs> Some of you guys, <laughs> you guys get it? It's how you look. I look at that, I'm like, dude, all right, come on now. Right, Stevie? Right, go get a tie clip. I'm not kidding. That'll be the last time he ever wears that again. <laughs> Don't laugh at us, all right, good. Dude, trust me, I got embarrassed at several meetings, Stevie. Back when I was back in the day, guess what? Every time I got embarrassed, I'm like, okay, don't do that. <laughs> that's how it was that's how you learn yes or no yeah. that's how you learn you know how I learned how to play baseball my coach embarrassed me you know the best way to coach sometimes is to shame some people man you know why because if you're not shamed you don't change if you're not shamed you don't change and if you get offended at the shaming you're a freaking wuss making myself clear yeah. you're a wuss you're not meant for business. Go back to a job. You're not meant for business. Go work for somebody else where they'll still treat you like shit, but at least you get like a basic salary, very basic salary. This is truth. Okay? Look, business doesn't care about your feelings. I want to let everybody know that. Business doesn't care. Okay? Nobody cares. Business doesn't care. Right? Can't cry yourself to 
success. <laughs> it sounds stupid, doesn't it? But people try. People try. Why is it so hard? Wah, 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 right? I'm going through this, right? Nobody cares, and guess what? You're still broke. You can't cry your way to the top. I want to let you know that. Okay? You rub your eyes from the tear, still, problems are still there. You can't sweep shit under the rug. You know, my mother always taught, told me that. Son, don't sweep shit under the rug because it doesn't make it smell any better. It's still there. So what does it mean? Every problem, face it head on. Every problem, create a solution. You guys are professional solution makers, not problem focusers. You should not be worried and focused on problems. You should be, wor you, you should be focused on creating solutions, not just for yourself, but for people. That's what we get paid to do. Hello, yes, yes. right? We get paid to create solutions for other people. So it would make sense that you also create solutions for yourself. You guys are grown adults, not kids anymore. Kids cry, okay? Kid, right, Sheila? Yeah. Right. Kids cry, okay? That's cool. It's cool to cry when you're a kid. It's not so cool when you're like 30. You're still crying, okay? Grow up. It's okay to cry. Do it alone. Do it somewhere else. All good. Everybody needs a good cry every now and then, right? After you do that, get your ass to work. Stop crying. Stop, stop complaining. Crying equals complaining, bitching, all of the above. Okay? You are not allowed to complain or cry as a leader. You're not. Oh, that's rough. It's a human emotion. Yeah, it is, but it's one that doesn't serve you and doesn't change anything. Doesn't change anything. I, I only create the emotions that change my outcome. I am all about changing my outcome. I am not about staying fixed and flatlined, okay? So the way you carry yourself is extremely important. Next one, number five. What makes you attractive is the way you speak. The way you speak. How do you deliver the message? The way you speak, that makes you attractive. Okay? So don't speak monotone. It doesn't help if you speak monotone. I'm new, I'm excited, I'm in training. Right? It's really annoying. It's really annoying, guys. Okay? Have a little bit of flavor. Have a little bit of spice. You know, like have a little bit of charisma. By the way, you can learn charisma. It's not something that's just built in with somebody, somebody has it and you do it, either you have it or you don't. The truth is everybody can learn charisma. But if you speak monotone, if you speak, you know, at a low monotone voice, you're gonna lull people to sleep. That's like a lullaby. Except it sucks. Like lullabies are actually decent to listen to, right? <laughs> but you speak low and monotone, dude, I go to sleep. We had, we had this one dude, I know I'm being recorded. I, that's why I don't want to name, name any names in our, in our company. We had this one dude like Tim Mullaney, okay? <laughs> this dude was like the most boring mf -er. Like he's never gonna invite me to speak. It's all good, Tim. I, I'll never see your team anyway. What team? Anyway, so the bottom line is, right? Right, when you understand like the long-term effects of this, right? Look, he was the most boring dude at Wealth Bowl. He's the one dude that we had, I think it was back in 2012, he came to our Wealth Bowl. Was that 2012? I think it was 2012, right? And we got, you know, we literally, he got off the stage and like half the crowd was just like done. They were knocked out, okay? <laughs> knocked out completely, just, just drooling, just a complete mess, okay? And then right after that, they had another speaker kind of woke the crowd up a little bit. It was a little bit better, but man, it was brutal. Do you know why? Because he's, he's just one of these product guys that doesn't really build much, right? And he just kind of like, he's made a lot of money, but he's just very flat line speaker, okay? If you want to be a leader, you got to learn how to move a crowd, okay? You got to learn how to move a crowd. You have to keep people enthralled and keep, keep people engaged. Keeping people engaged is critical. Okay, it's critical to go, go, you either go big or go home, man. It's the bottom line. You go big or you go home. 
but you got to work on the way you deliver and the way you speak. And vocabulary is also in that, right? The way you speak, vocabulary. Stop using slang terms all the time. Unless you're trying to relate to somebody, try, stop using slang terms, okay? It's not delish. It's delicious, okay? Please stop using that. That is an absolute tragedy. It's an it's absolute tragedy, dude. Like, delish? Really? Like, finish the word. Like, finish the word, please. Oh, my goodness. It's unbelievable. I can think of a bunch of other ones, too, right? It's not swag. It's swagger. Swagger, okay? It's not swag. That's stupid. Right? Turn up. Turn up. No, that is a vegetable. That's a herb. That's a garden vegetable. Armando grows that in his, in his garden. <laughs> He's got his lettuce right here. <laughs> Marvin just dropped it off. <laughs> Marvin, what are you doing with lettuce? <laughs> you, go, you go to the store before? <laughs> that was great. That was great. That was awesome. Literally dropped the damn lettuce in front of you. That's great. <laughs> Marvin, you were ready for that one, too. Dude. It's like... It's like he probably literally just he thought this back of his head. You know what? Eric's going to bring up the, the whole lettuce thing. I'm going to sit right behind, behind Arm, Armando, and guess what? When he brings it up, I'm going to drop it. That's, I, I bet you that's exactly what he thought about right before this meeting. That is crazy. Oh, my goodness. Hey, let us know how you thought of that. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Oh, it's great. This is, this is live. You're right. This is live. Guys, no, this is not a, uh, not a produce thing, okay? It's not a produce thing. It's, we do financial services. Uh, just <laughs> is there a way to, like, edit that? Can we, like, take that out? No, it's all good. We can keep it. Just, no, we, let's just keep it. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, that's called personality. Hey, isn't it true people need to see that you have fun a little bit from time to time? I think that's very, what? Attractive. Yeah. Having fun is attractive. Turning up is not attractive. <laughs> some of you guys go, oh, turn up. No, some of you need to save up. How's that? Look at about turn up once you save up. So many people going to the clubs and spending money, and I don't get it, man. Making it rain with $1 bills. I've never understood that concept, right? We're making it rain. I'm looking at the, um, those, are, those are ones. <laughs> looking at them just like turn over. I'm like, those, that's a one. It's not even a 10. It's not even a five. It's not even a hundred. It's a one, right? And they, it hits the ground. Everybody like, pick it up again because they need to pay rent, right? <laughs> What's the purpose of bottle service? Anybody know? What's the purpose of that? I know for the clubs to make money. Off your dumb ass. Okay? Bottle service. It's great. I don't drink. I'm not hating. But I will say this. Um, you know how expensive bottle service is? Like thousands of dollars, right? Thousands of dollars, guys. Unbelievable. Like I once did bottle service one time. Okay? I, didn't, I drank none of it. Okay? I bought like, it's like, oh, here's sign up for our package or whatever. I bought the damn package for my team. Okay, it was like 2,500 bucks. I don't know what it was, like $2,500, okay? And it did nothing for me. You guys understand? It's the stupidest thing ever. And I, and I thought about it, I was like, man, I got the 2,500 bucks, but could you imagine like the people that didn't have the 2,500 bucks? Like the people that don't have the $2,500, but they're spending the $2,500 on a credit card or whatever, and then they gotta pay like months of interest because they can't pay it off. You talk about stupidity at the highest level, that's like the highest level of stupidity, right? Or the lowest level, whichever one you use your, as your chart. Okay, there's like really, really high levels of stupidity. That is like, that, that probably takes the, takes the cake. So no bottle service, guys, okay, please. Uh, and number, finally, number six, 
Number six, you become attractive based off your work ethic. How hard do you work? Hardworking people are attractive. Hardworking entrepreneurs are very attractive. Is it true? Yes. People that bust their ass. Some of you guys in here, man, what good is a lazy man for? You are lazy, guess what? Your asses should be kicked to the curb. Okay? That's right. Right? All the girls doing the Z right now, right? Okay? Doing the Zorro. Okay? <laughs> the, the Zorro, right? <laughs> okay? At the end of the day, what good is a lazy man for? And guess what? Some of you women step up to the plate. A lot of you women, you guys, you guys want all this other stuff. Guess what? You got to step up to the plate. You got to earn it. Okay? You got to earn it. And you know what's crazy is that in our company, women work a lot harder than the guys. That's the truth. They do. I'm trying to balance out that scale. <laughs> I'm trying to balance out that scale. It's so crazy how people go, you know, some people go, oh, you know, you know, my wife's a hustler, this and this and this. I'm like, dude, how are you bragging about that? As a dude, like separate from you women for a second, but as a dude, how are you bragging that your wife's a hustler? You should be out hustling your wife or at least trying to keep up with her. That's the way I look at things. At least trying to keep up with her. Right? Stop making excuses, right? And some of you, some of you wives, stop hiding behind your men that are hustlers. Go out there and hustle yourself and crush it. Earn your, earn your stripes. Earn your name. Stop being these people that are just kind of like, nobody should be hiding behind the other one. Go hustle. Earn your place. Stop bitching. Stop complaining. Put your head down and hustle. Grind. Because eventually, guess what? People get sick of you not hustling. You know what you create? Resentment. True or false? True. Resentment. Okay? You need to put your head down. You got to make, make some stuff happen. Okay? It's awesome when the, both, the king and queen are both hungry. Yep. Some of you single people in here that don't relate, it's all right. You be a king. <laughs> By yourself. <laughs> you're king and a queen. What you're laughing at. Oh, you single people. Sorry about that. Yeah, both of you guys. <laughs> queen by yourself. Wear your crown. All good. <laughs> Sorry about that, ladies. Okay? But go, hey, hustle. Doesn't matter whether you're male or female. Main thing is you got to hustle. You don't hustle? Guess what? I got no remorse for you. I have no sympathy for people who don't hustle. I have no sympathy for people that don't work hard and just complain and bitch about their problems. I, I, just, I just cannot stand it. I truly believe that in our country, everybody should pull their own little red wagon. Yes. Isn't it true? Yes. Everybody should pull their own little red wagon. That's, that's what it's by design, right? And, and for me, again, I just want to make my, my, my stance very clear. I, I, I'd almost never give people that beg for money, money. Never. Never. The only time I do it is if they're handicapped. If they're handicapped. I'll donate. See, I support funding the needy. Okay? I oppose funding the lazy. Exactly. <laughs> Crackheads, drug, dr you know, people that are hooked on drugs, drunks, whole nine. I oppose that 1,000%. You know why? Four working limbs, a working brain, valid social security number in this country, and your ass is out there begging for scraps. You know what's sad about that? A lot of these guys, they make more money than, than us. <laughs> they did this whole, this whole deal with somebody that's, that's, that's like... Uh, I forgot what is Inside Edition or something like that. They, some news. They, they, there's a dude in New York City parks his BMW around the, around the block and every single day just panhandles, made 80 grand. 80 grand in a year. Tax free. I'm not even kidding. And then he goes back in, drives his BMW home. I'm not even kidding. Not even just like, like and then they caught up to him, right? They found out where his BMW was stashed. They caught up to him, and he was like, oh, no cameras, you know? <laughs> One of those guys. Could you believe that? 
I couldn't believe it. It just boiled my blood. I said, man, either we're idiots. <laughs> we're idiots. It's just unbelievable. So, like, hustle and build a real business. Stop just taking breadcrumbs and scraps from other people that work hard for their money. Okay? So, so anyway, I thought that was, uh, that was very interesting. 55% of this country doesn't pay taxes. You know, there's another interesting stat. 55% of this country doesn't pay taxes. 55. Big number, yes? Yes. Hey, what's the best thing you could do for a poor person? Not be one of them. Best thing you do for a poor person? No, it's not to, not to give them money. It's to not be one of them. Be an example. Right? People in our communities need examples. They don't need money. Because money funds bad habits if you have them. Money funds bad habits. Money helps good habits. Money is a tool. It does not have a personality. Okay? And if you lack money, you lack good habits. It's as simple as that. See, being broke, and I'll close with this, being broke is a temporary thing, or it should be a temporary thing. Our mentalities make it permanent. Okay? Being broke should be a temporary thing, guys. Our mentalities make it permanent. It's a very temporary thing. It's like catching a cold, right? You catch a cold, you take the medication, you get better habits, and then you get better. But if you're broke year after year after year after year after year, guess what? It is no longer a temporary thing. It is a habit. You should get progressively richer in this company every year, not poorer in this company every year based off of your spending habits. Every dollar you get, you save most of it. That's the goal. That's it. Big savings equals what? Freedom. No savings equal what? Bondage. That's it. Bottom line it. Okay? You want big savings? That's something you got to work for. So your work ethic, lastly, will attract a lot of great people into your business. People are attracted to hard workers that are busy and stay busy. Got it? Yes. Cool. One, come out and lead us out, dude. Let's go.